I started making guitars solely out of love and passion for this instrument. I was playing guitars for 30 plus years, but building one was another kind of dream. Now, making a guitar, sure, but making it better, that's another challenge. Hi, my name is Mikio Mithans and I like to show you how Mithans guitars are built. So it all starts with picking and selecting the wood. Uh, I personally love some character in wood, so I hand select every piece. The wood that I buy has about 12% of moisture, which is way too much for a boutique guitar uh, that's usually found in cheaper guitars. So I take it straight to the kiln where it's dried to about 4%, which takes about 12 wicks. And then the wood rests for eight additional weeks and gets some moisture back to about uh, six to seven percent final moisture. Some pieces go into the roasting oven, which makes the wood incredibly stable, darker and lighter in weight. After six weeks of resting, it's time for measuring and cutting the wood. After cutting it to size, it has to be leveled and planed to desired thickness. Two book matched body halves are then glued together for 24 hours. This is final checkout of all the bodies and tops to see if everything fits before the building starts. This is preparation uh, for the CNC drilling holes for the fixture. So before joining tops with the body, the bodies get chambered. Those are resonance chambers and of course uh, a huge weight relief. Here we can see some back cavities routed out. And this is routing the arch top, the top bevel of uh, the body. Now adding the pickup cavities and the drill holes for pots and switch. And cutting out the entire profile of the body. After the CNC, the enclosure of the body or the access wood is cut away with the bandsaw. The tabs that were needed on CNC to hold everything down are then trimmed away on the table router.
rough sanding of the sides of the body with orbital vertical sander. It's just rough B80 sanding. Uh, so the body is ready for uh, the bevel routing on the table router. And to finish these steps off on the table router, beveling the back edge for a smoother play. The beveling radius is different for each type of the body, so the LP, SD and TF versions of the body have all different uh, radius. After the CNC and initial sanding, the wood needs to rest for at least a week. So after a week of wood stabilization, uh, I start sanding the body. The body is sanded with three different grids, P80, P150 and P240. So the whole sanding process is done three times in a row. And the end result is very smooth wood. Sanding the sides and all the beveled edges. And finally, all the places that cannot be reached with the sander need to be hand sanded. The CNC leaves a lot of marks, so all that needs to be sanded away. Every scratch, everything that is uneven, it needs to be perfect in preparation for the paint job. Now, you might have noticed that everything you see is one-man operation. And that's exactly what it is. I'm a sole person responsible for building a Meet Hans guitar. That means that there is no outsourcing in any way. There is, of course, a huge difference if 20 or 50 people build a single guitar or one person builds the whole guitar because there is much more control over the whole process. After initial sanding, I continue with pre-drilling the holes for straddle buttons and the jack cavity. Jack cavity is then drilled by hand. The sanded bodies go to rest and we continue with the neck. After routing the channels for truss rod and support rods, the neck and the fingerboard are sanded and cleaned. First, the carbon fiber rods are hammered in. This is very lightweight, but very strong material and mostly prevents the twisting of the neck. This is one of the features rarely seen in uh, mass-produced guitars. The truss rod gets wrapped in the Kaflan tape and hammered in in its channel. Mm -hmm. 
even though it's wrapped in the Teflon tape, uh, I still use a piece of tape over it to protect the glue entering uh, this channel. Cutting the protective tape to the minimum possible size. Fingerboard and leg are then joined and glued together. Before continuing on the neck, some inlays have to be cut out on the laser. Once inlays are prepared, it's time to CNC the top of the neck. Uh, we start with the channels for the purflings. Purflings are wooden edges on the fingerboard and their only function is aesthetics. Purflings are made out of wood. Usually two or three species of wood are pressed together and glued and then inserted into these channels. They give the fingerboard that nice picture frame effect. And this is of course another feature that you usually find only on boutique guitars. Next, the pockets for the inlays are routed out. Because of the needed very tiny drill bit, it takes hours to finish this job. And it's time to install the inlays that we cut on the laser before. The inlays are hammered in their pockets. After initial positioning, I fill all the tiny gaps with a super fine ebony dust. And adding the industrial strength super glue. Spraying with the activator to speed up the curing process of the glue. And the mess that you see here is the top of the fingerboard after inlays installment and of course it gets cleaned up by another routing. Next step is cutting the fret slots. Cutting the fret slots on CNC ensures great accuracy, which is extremely important in high quality instrument. The final step then is cutting out the profile of the neck and removing the enclosure and the access wood uh, with the bandsaw.
We're back on the table router where the tabs needed for CNC and all the access wood is trimmed away. After all the trimming, it's time for the back of the neck. First, the profile is cut on the CNC. Routing out tiny pockets and channels for the back inlays. Profiling the heel of the neck. And profiling the back of the headstock. After raw cut on CNC, the necks rest for at least a week. When you cut away pieces of wood, the wood always moves and it doesn't matter how it's treated. So the rest is really necessary. After the resting phase, the back of the headstock inlays are installed. It is basically the same procedure as the front inlays. They're hammered in, the tiny gaps are filled with fine dust, and then everything is glued together and send it away. And this is the final result of those inlays. The next step is drilling tuner holes. This is done by hand because of the angle of the neck. All angled necks on Midhans guitars feature only 10% neck angle, which is less than anything else on the market. This prevents breakage when guitar falls down and of course increases the tuning stability. Here comes the sanding of the Mac. It's the same procedure as on the body. Sand it with three different grids, 80, 150 and 240, uh, until all the scratch marks are removed and the wood is super smooth. One of the features of the Midhans guitars uh, necks is that they're all built from one piece wood and they always feature an ebony fingerboard.
marking the fretboard for the exact radius leveling with a sanding beam. Checking the levels to see if the fretboard is really flat. Continuing with the final sanding of the fretboard. First the edges are turned over. This uh, nicely rounded edges make playing very comfortable. The fretboard is then sanded with six different grids, all up to P1000 which is only possible because um, ebony is such hard and dense wood. So we basically end up with polished fretboard. Now the easiest way to do side dots is of course plastic side dots which are used in most guitars all over the world. But on Midhans guitars I only use brass and aluminum side dots. There's of course much more work to it, but it's all worth it. Here you see using me a template to drill the holes. Brass rods are then cut to size, dipped in a glue and hammered in. Once the glue is cured, the rods are flushed, uh, cut away with a rotary cutting tool. The inside of the rods are then cleaned with another drill. The oak wooden rods are cut to size, uh, dipped in glue and hammered in the brass rods. Removing the axis with pliers. For sanding purposes, you see me putting white marks on the edge of the fretboard, and then, of course, everything is sanded uh, flat. Now the next job is in my opinion the hardest job in uh, building the guitar and it's incredibly important. A feature that you can find on Midhans guitars, stainless steel frets. First step, cutting frets to required size. Next step would be fret tank removal because the tanks do not look out uh, from the fretboard edges on Midhans guitars. There's a good reason why when you walk into a guitar shop almost no guitars have uh, stainless steel frets. They're also called tool killer and anatomy killer. They're incredibly hard. A tiny amount of glue is applied to each fret individually and the frets are then hammered in. Because of the removed tanks, the hammered-in technique gives a much better result than pressed-in frets. Because of hardness of stainless steel frets, it takes about three times the amount of effort compared to normal frets. But of course it's worth it for the end result because the stainless steel frets will last for a lifetime. So don't expect any dents from the strings. Here you can see the removal of the excess of the frets and hand leveling with a sanding beam. 
this is the only way to ensure that there is no fret buzz. Testing the levels with a fret rocker. Again, applying fret marker to every fret uh, just to check uh, and see which fret is touched and which is not while fret leveling. When all frets are leveled, there is a fade out made on the end of the frets which assures much lower uh, string action uh, in final instruments. Fred Rocker is a central part of the leveling to check that really all frets are leveled. While leveling, of course, the tops of the frets are removed. Uh, that's why we have to bring them back. This is called crowning. For the next step, all the gaps between fret ends and fingerboard are filled with a filler. Fret ends are then beveled to a 35 degrees angle. Next step is cleaning the fingerboard with a razor blade to remove any residue. And then finally the fret dressing, which is removing the sharp edges uh, because of the fret beveling. Fret dressing is uh, made with two different files and several different techniques. The edges of frets are then polished with a fine sandpaper. Any marks on the fingerboard get removed with the steel ball. Next step is polishing the frets and removing all the scratches with 12 different grades of sandpaper. So frets are basically sanded and polished 12 times in a row. At the end, frets are polished with a compound with a rotary tool. And final clean up with the steel wool.
Now these threats will last for a lifetime. Back on the body, taping off and protecting for grain filling. Using a wood grain filler assures that all the pores in the wood are filled before any spraying is done. Applying the mahogany grain filler with a soft cloth The figure then needs to get dried and after it's completely dried it gets sanded off. That assures that the top of the wood stays untouched and the deep grains in the wood are filled with the filler. For effectiveness this procedure needs to be repeated three times. Taping off the edge binding in preparation for staining. This is done by hand and it takes uh, years of experience. Stain is then applied with a soft cloth. What you see here is applying a black stain. After it gets soaked in the wood and dried, this stain will turn the body into a beautiful dark brown color. Now stains can of course be applied in multiple stages. What you see here is applying the first stage, the black stain. Once dried it gets sanded off and the black color only stays on the lower green. That gives us a basic separation between lower and higher grains because the lower grain will be darker. Now applying the second stain which is a beautiful custom dark brown color. From Kyoto Confusion to Berlin Carco, same procedure, first the black stain which gets sanded off. And then the second lighter black color is applied. Staining burning green after the black stain and after sanding it off, the green color is applied. Over this green a very light black color. This makes the green darker and less saturated. When dried, everything gets sanded off.
And finally, the fourth color, a uh, very beautiful custom light tobacco brown over everything. Same procedure, of course, on the next. First the black stain, which will get sanded off, and then the other colors will follow. After all the staining is done and thoroughly dried, it's time to glue the neck into the body. Clamped overnight and cured the next day. Next step is laser etching the serial numbers on the back of the headstock. This is the start of a very long spraying procedure. First, the primers are applied and sanded off flat. What you see here is then applying to the solid colors. This is a wheat green for Toledo wheat. Wiping off the dust and applying the solid black color for Babylon. And applying sunburst on stained guitars. After some burst and solid colors, a two-layer base coat is applied and dried overnight and then send it flat the next day. Spray painting a guitar is very different from it's a spray painting a car. The guitar's finish at the end needs to be like a glass while there's uh, a lot of orange peel on cars. To achieve that finish, lots of layers need to be applied just so they can be sanded off and everything gets flattened. After the primer, the base coat is applied in six layers and it gets dried over the night. Sanding all those layers away to get as flat surface as possible. While doing that, of course, you have to be very careful not to send through and destroy the color underneath. Day 3, applying new 6 layers of base coat. This base coat now needs to get dried and cured for several days. After that, it gets fine sanded in preparation for the final top coat. Following with four layers of the final hide loss top coat, which needs about 10 days to get cured. After 10 days, of course, the final fine sanding in preparation for the buffing. 
debuffing is executed on three different wheels with three different compounds. Uh, that would be medium, fine and super fine. And this is the final step in the 20 days paint job. All the necks with oil finish get a four day oil treatment. Uh, I'm using custom made oil, which took years to develop. Uh, on the first day, the wood is drowned in oil and sanded to a finer grit. The excess oil is wiped off and it gets dried over the night. The next day, the same procedure continues with a higher grid. All that is done over four days. Because of that long procedure, the oil is deep in the wood and it will last for many, many years. The fingerboard, which was not oiled with a hardening oil, uh, gets cleaned up with the steel wool and then nurtured with a special bore oil, which does not harden. Even though the ebony has a lot of oil in it and it does not dry up, the extra amount of oil uh, makes the fingerboard visually more acceptable and darker. So overall, it's just a nice conditioner for your fingerboard. The final step on oil plaques, a wax is applied to the back of the necks for smoother playing. To start off with the accessories, the wooden boards are pressed together and fine sanded in preparation for laser etching and cutting. With the help of the laser, the boards are then engraved and cut out, and this is how we get the back plates. Cutting out peat cards from very exotic bird wood. Removing inlays from the cut out celluloid sheet. and cutting out peak guards and back plates from acrylic peak guard material. Countersinking drill holes. And finally staining all the plates to a certain color. What you see here is black stain which will give the back plates a beautiful dark brown color. Another exclusive feature on Midhans guitars are wooden pickup rings. Uh, I do not use plastic pickup rings at all. Here you can see cutting out those rings out of maple plate. The rings then need to be hand sanded and if needed colored with stain. The final stage would be applying base coat, sanding it off and applying made finish. 
Maxed is gathering hardware and accessories for every guitar that is about to be finished. Shield ink is another important part of Nithan's guitars. All calities that have exposed wires are shielded with copper tape or shielding paint. This paint is mixed with graphite which makes it conductive. This paint needs to be applied two to three times with 24 hours drying in between. This is the model Toledo and its neck being balled on. All the back plates have custom engravings. Since Mithas guitars have zero fret, the knot is there only to take care of string movement up and down. Knot slots still have to be adjusted for its depth and of course for the right string gauge. As part of the final assembly, here we can see installing the tuners. To really take care of that tuning stability, all Midhans guitars include locking tuners. Some models also include real ebony tuner buttons. Next step, putting pickups together with pickup rings. As you already know, we only use wooden uh, self-made pickup rings. The final assembly begins with bridge installation, which needs to be incredibly accurate. It needs to be dead in the center and at exactly right distance, so the intimation is never a problem. What you see here is a little tool for the bridge distance based on the scale length, and then with the help of the laser, the center is marked. Every breach has its own template that helps mark the breach posts. Once bridge is in position, there is a double check with red strings.
with those red strings you can check the alignment of the first and the last string and they help adjust the pickup position. Once everything is double checked, the breech post holes are being drilled. This is marking and drilling the hole for the ground wire to the bridge. Big part of assembly is of course soldering the electronics. Uh, I only use high-end electronics, high-end pots and switches. Everything is done by hand and as you can see the plates are protected by copper foil. Here we can see soldering the electronics for the Berlin model and then everything being installed into the cavities. Once the covers with their copper foil uh, backing are installed, they connect with the shielding paint in the cavity and everything connects to the ground. Installing the pickups and tightening the screws of the rings. Once the bridge is installed, pickups are installed and electronics is done, it's time for the strings. The default strings on Mithran's guitars are Ernie Ball Slinkies 10 to 46. Here you can see marking the position for string trees on the Toledo model. To keep up with the best tuning stability, the string trees are also graph deck, uh, which are permanently labricated string trees. The setup begins with the measurement for the truss rod adjustment. Adjusting and testing intonation. After adjusting the intimation, it's time to adjust the string height, the string action, and then, of course, the height of the pickups. Putting on the remaining parts like volume and ton mops 
And then at the end, it's time to stretch the strings so that when you get a guitar, the tuning stability is perfect. And after waiting and measuring the guitar, it's time to test it. So all there is left to say is thank you for watching and welcome to the world of Meat Hands Guitars.